Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're importing our meshes into Substance Painter in order to bake the high poly mesh into the low poly mesh. Then we'll spend some time painting our low poly mesh to make it look pretty. Finally, we'll assemble a nice clump of rice inside Blender, ready to be imported into Unreal Engine. Let's do it. Okay, so open Substance Painter and create a new file. We'll use the Unreal Engine 4 preset. Hand on file, select your low poly mesh. I'll create my textures with a resolution of 248, but feel free to change it if you like. Okay, now that our mesh is open, go into the texture set settings tab and scroll until you find bake mesh maps. Let me change the resolution of the bake to 2048 and then click the icon next to high definition meshes. And here you have to select your high poly mesh. Next, increase the max forward distance quite a bit because some of the geometry was far away from the low poly mesh. And finally, set the dilation width to zero. This is really important because otherwise you'll get weird looking artifacts when we bake our maps. We'll only bake the normal ID and ambient occlusion maps. Bake your maps. And if the geometry in the textures looks incomplete, try increasing the frontal distance a little bit more. You should now have a result similar to the one seen in the screen. Now we'll set up the opacity. Create a new fill layer and disable every channel of the material. Then go into texture set settings once again and create a new channel, an opacity channel. And make sure this new fill layer affects the opacity channel exclusively. Set the fill color to black. This will make the whole model transparent, but that's not what we're after. To fix this, we'll use the ID map. Go ahead and create a new fill layer, and then right-click and add a black mask. Then right-click on the mask and add a color selection. Now under color settings, make sure the ID mask is selected and use the sampler tool to select the green color. If you did everything correctly, you should have the grass blades painted white. Finally, we need to change the shader settings to PBR Metal Roughness with Alpha Blending. And there you go, the background is gone. Now this is where the fun part begins, because you'll get to display your artistic skills. We'll begin with the base color map, so the way I did it is by creating a fill layer first, and making it affect exclusively the color channel. Then I added a base color which will serve as a basis for our painting. I chose a dark yellowish green. Then add a new paint layer on top of it and paint away to your heart's content. I highly recommend looking at some reference to get an idea of what colors to choose. In my case, I decided to go with a dark green near the base and making it lighter the further up I went. As for the colors, I recommend using mid-tone greens up to yellow. I found out that yellow works really well for the highlights. If, like me, you're a Nubatort, here's a tip. I found out that setting the blending mode to soft light gives a really nice soft blending between the colors. Anyway, I'll speed up this part so you don't have to watch me paint in real time. Alright, here's my final result. We'll deal with the metallic map next. For this I'm gonna use a simple uniform color and I'll make it just a touch metallic. In other words, I'll choose a color a tiny little bit away from black. Looking pretty good so far. Now we'll deal with the roughness map. Create a new fill layer and assign it to the roughness channel. Let's begin by making the grass almost completely rough, so choose a mid-tone gray from the value scale. 
to make things interesting, we'll use particle effects to darken some areas of the roughness map. So create a new fill layer and from your shelf go into the particle section. I'll use the rain effect. The goal is to make the grass look wet from rain droplets. So apply this effect as many times as you like, making sure to check how your model looking when light shines on its surface. Once you're happy with your grass, export all your textures by going into File, Export Textures. Next, we'll create the final mesh inside Blender. Alright, welcome back to Blender. Now we'll create a nice clump of grass because adding this plane directly into your game will look really bad. So let me begin by renaming this plane into Grass LP and next I'll show you how to create a transparency inside Blender. Open a second window and have it be a shader editor and add a material to your low poly mesh. Add a new image texture and we'll use the base color that we exported from Soft and Spain. Now add a transparent PSDF and mix shader nodes. Please connect them as shown in the screen. Now inside the material stuff, go to settings and change blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. The background should be gone now. Ok, so now the goal is to make the grass look good from every angle. Begin by duplicating this mesh in case something goes terribly wrong. And now your goal is to create a nice clump of grass. Create duplicates of this mesh and transform them so they look good. The trickiest angle is usually the top down view because of the planar nature of the mesh. So take your time and try to make the mesh look good from every possible angle. But remember, try to make as few duplicates as possible, because a complex mesh will have a negative impact in your game. For the millionth time, I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch it real time. By the end of this process, you should hopefully have something that resembles or is even better than this mesh. Select all your individual planes and join them by using the Ctrl J shortcut. Now your origin will probably be completely messed up, so let's fix that. Try to position your new mesh so it's sitting on top of the XY plane and try to align the center to the origin. With your object selected, go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Since the 3D cursor is at the origin, your mesh's origin should now be nice and centered and on the X-Way plane. When you're done, export your mesh and we're finally done with this part. Alright, so in the final part of this tutorial, I will show you how to import this mesh into Unreal Engine and set up the material so that the grass is both transparent and animated as if it was being affected by wind. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the final part of this series.